How's it going guys? Hope you're having a great day. This is Art of Zod with a speed paint video of the Fennec Fox with commentary. Now this video is just going to be a brief overview of my process and just basically explaining how I created this study just from start to finish. So sit back and enjoy. Any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below uh, but without further ado let's begin. So I begin the study with making a box and this border pretty much defines the composition of the fennec. So without the box, it will be pretty difficult to, to define where the fennec starts and finishes. So it's always good to start with a container. And I begin the drawing off with using the hard edge lines. And I use a technique similar to negative space studies, where I'm looking for shapes, shapes that correlate to one another, using the horizontal and vertical relationships you can check if things line up or not. This includes the background as well. Having the background also drawn in can help you define how the form looks. Where does it go? Where does it fit? Do things line up? If they don't line up, always, make, always take the time to fix mistakes wherever possible. I sometimes go back and clean up lines. I remove mistakes if I make any. I go back and refine some more. I always sometimes uh, flip the canvas from left to right from time to time. This is just to refresh my eyes a bit. So sometimes when you look at one side for too long, you may think, oh, yeah, it, looks, it may look fine, but the moment you flip it, you may, it may look completely different. So sometimes it's, it's a good way to do that. It's good, good practice. So now I've uh, started to block in the background. So this is the first thing I tend to do for any kind of study. Get the background down first because it affects the foreground. It affects the, the fennec when we paint it. So it's important to get that down first. So as you can see, I've kept it really simple. And now I've started to block in the fennec itself. I tend to use a local value. It's just something that which is in between, not too dark and not too bright. And um, once I've got the shape down, I start to add the colors in and as you can see I tend to create layers on top of layers so the base layer which is the flat color of the shape of the fennec and then I do a layer mask on top of that so this is where I can start adding in the the actual colors that I see or I'm looking at from the fennec and the cool thing about this is that the base layer can act as a guide to the shape I don't have to like constantly change things around the shapes there all the time if I need to modify the shape I can always go to that layer and change it again but it's now my base layer where I will be working within and obviously down the line when I start to blend things out I can start breaking away from that just a little bit not too much but I still want to retain that the shape of the fennec which is what's important so um, I still going through the subdividing of the shape here, just looking for patterns, looking for things that I think are there. I sometimes squint my eyes, I squint them to see any any shapes that I see. And if I do see a shape, I just, I just block it in with the color. I sometimes, uh, you may not see it, you may see it if you zoom in carefully. I sometimes set the brush to 50% and then I, I drop a color that's currently on the fur and then I make a stroke. Then I drop that stroke I've made, which is, which is done in 50%, and then I set the brush back to 100%. So what this does, I'm capturing, I'm capturing the mid value, the mid color of that stroke. So rather than me selecting the color manually, I tend to do it that way. It's, it's, it works for me. The reason why I do it is because it just saves time. But if you're done, if you're doing this for the first time, I would recommend doing it properly. Just use the palette tool, select the color, and make that color. It's good practice that way. I tend to skip that area just to save time, but I sometimes do manually pick colors now and then when I need to, in case I need to change something drastically. So I'm still adding color on top of color here, which is what I enjoy doing. I, if, I see there's a, if, there's, if I see there's something wrong, I will pick the color. I'll try and get as close as possible and just paint over it. I just keep painting over and over until I'm satisfied with what I see. I 
So I'm going under the neck here, again, still trying to refine these shapes that I see. So now I'm refining the ears, making sure the ears have the same kind of shape. I'm, not, I'm trying not to be too detailed on them. I'm trying to be very, very abstract, per se. The detail side should be left to the last minute. Right now, it's all about capturing the overall shape, the overall look. So I'm getting close to working on the background now. I'm just going to be doing some light work on that just to add some contrast because on the reference the background is slightly darker at the top. Also adding some bit of debris here and there on the background just to make it look as close as possible. So I'm now I'm back on the fox again. And now I've started to move into blending. So this is where the light blending happens, just a bit of refinement. Bringing out those shapes a bit more. And the fur. This is where you can really look at the fur patterns, how they look, how they flow, and apply them to your, to your painting. Again, keep it loose, keep it loose. This is not detail part, it's all about bringing it together. So as you can see, I'm not really spending too much time on detailing, just bringing colors together, but not too much. You have to be careful of how much you blend. If you blend too much, things look muddy. So you have to be conscious about how much you wanna blend and how much you wanna keep intact. So as you see on the ears, I've blended the base down and then I added some loose strokes to simulate the fur of the ears, but I haven't really blended that much. There's still some hard edge areas still left in there, and I want to keep that those sort of edges for contrast and for shape. So again, there might be some a few pauses now and then, and that's because this painting was done on Twitch. So I do spend a lot of time talking to my viewers if they have any questions, uh, just general banter. So I went over the back there with some light greys and blues and that's just to give push back the some of the values back in there of the colour and brightness of the fur. As we get closer to the end, this is where I can start looking at the overall shape and see what places to fix, anything that I need to refine. I, this is the perfect time to do it. So as I'm blending and refining, I'm getting, I'm moving more towards the final stages of actually doing the details part. So as you can see, I'm now making little strokes here and there now. This is where all the detail kicks in. And you can spend as long as you want on this, but you have to be careful. Don't go overboard on details. Sometimes areas of interest is where the details should be applied. So as you can see, any places that have hair, I'm, I'm trying to make really subtle strokes, not too much. On the face, as you can see, I, I spent a, a bit of time there, as you can see, the, the cursor's flying all over the place because I'm adding little bits of detail, a little bit of fur, details on the eye, the reflection. But generally looking at the shadows, the refinement, fixing anything that I think is irrelevant to the, to the reference, anything I may have over-exaggerated, I can push back a bit. So on the legs there, I uh, added some uh, some fur there, just a little bit of fur. So I'm now refining the muzzle. So 
Ah, look, here comes the whiskers. This was tricky to do. I'm not a fan of doing whiskers because I, I, my, when I do loose strokes, they, they go a bit funny, so I had to take some time doing that. So I'm coming to the end of the painting now. Just more or less finalizing elements, cleaning up anything that needs a bit of fixing. I just do some final touches here and there. I've blurred out the background and then continue on until I'm uh, satisfied with the outcome. So yeah, I'm going to end my commentary here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. But yeah, thanks for watching and uh, enjoy the rest of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Also don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more weekly video updates. See you soon.